New Java, new license, now what? So basically, starting early 2019, Oracle Java is now, and basically therefore, pretty much all of Java is under a new license, which says that you can't use Java in a commercial production environment to run software without paying for it. Um, if you want the official Oracle Java, which is pretty much the official distribution that, especially on Windows, you probably are familiar with. Um, but there are other options. If you are not getting your support directly from Oracle or you don't care about some type of um, enterprise level support, then you can just switch to the OpenJDK just like they recommend and you'll be fine. There's, I mean, if anything, you're switching to a more open source version of Java, but that's where things get really confusing because it's like, oh, OpenJDK, great. That's a very early version of whatever Java platform with like no bug fixes. Um, obviously, I mean, you could use that for development. That's what the, uh, all the other variations of Java compilers and platforms are all tested against that reference edition but that's not what you want to do you want a recently patched version of Java that's you know like Java 8 patch the uh, 212 or something you want something like that so that it has most of the known vulnerabilities all patched up and everything and ready for production so anyway you can run the open JDK in production and use that as your runtime environment and you can do that for free and you can use a recent uh, patched version of it that's, you know, you can even get support from somebody besides Oracle on the OpenJDK. So anyway, that's what I'm going to get into. Um, I'm going to take as little as time as possible about it, but I want to do uh, a quick flyby of the landscape of the new Java and the new, um, the alternatives, basically. If you if you want to know the, the details about the license, um, the new license requirements and like pricing and all that that's your own homework this is to show you um, if you aren't going on that big enterprise boat what you need to know or just alternatives even if you are going down that enterprise boat okay so if you go to java.com here's a screen snap of that web page and you're gonna see a notice like this um, this is as deep into their actual licenses I'm gonna get right here so it basically says that uh, that the license has changed starting April 16th 2019 which is a little bit of extension it was supposed to as far as I know um, to my understanding it was supposed to start immediately at the end of January but either way the new Oracle license is substantially different from the prior Oracle Java license and remember this is only Oracle Java this isn't the rest of the Java ecosystem uh, the new license permits certain uses such as personal use and development use at no cost. So that's very important to note too. Um, if you're just a personal user, you're not using this as part of like your the backbone of your business, or um, you're basically then you're you're good. You know, you can just download. If you just want to run some Java program, you download off the internet a uh, game and whatever, you're good. Go ahead and just keep doing whatever you're doing if you don't want to worry about the hassle. If you're a developer, you can keep doing what you're doing. You can demonstrate Java software with the Oracle JDK, just like you always have. Um, you can use it on your development machines, all that latest version, no big deal, go for it. Um, the uses that you need to worry about is basically where you would have used the JRE, the Java runtime environment, in production, that's what you need to worry about. So once again, this applies to running commercial software in a production environment primarily. So if you are not doing that, you don't really have to worry about any of this. Um, yeah, so let's see what versions of Java are primarily like what are the top versions of Java being run right now in commercial environments 
here they are almost 80 percent are running Java 8 still I believe this is about a year old from uh, the time of this recording this was probably around March or June of 2018 so almost 80 percent were running Java 8 almost 10 percent running Java 7 and a vast minority running some of the other adjacent versions um, 11 hadn't the new LTS version hadn't been dropped yet official this early access so I imagine that one's building gaining momentum probably 5% just a guess by now they finally updated the Oracle real recently I want to say in the last month they updated the Oracle uh, certification for Java to match Java 11 now as a matter of fact and there is an upgrade from Java 8 to 11 that year if you have an 8 certification that should be good for three years I'd wait till the tail end of that and then just do the upgrade to 11 and here's the people that are supporting those versions of Java um, again I believe that this is the the URL of the blog that I stole at least this table from so OpenJDK 6 primarily by Azul Systems that since Red Hat gave it up Red Hat originally was the one who supported it. so these tiny little companies that you've never really heard of um, they're just riding the coattails picking up the slack because some of these companies have obviously been using you know Java 6 for a decade or more and they have absolutely no reason to deal with the hassle of upgrading to a newer JDK especially Java 9 or higher where it can just be radically different um, who knows those systems could be still running XP under the hood uh, or, you know it would just lead to that domino effect of dependency like everything would need to get upgraded and by then you'd be in, in a next gen system and it would more likely than not things would break so these people you know if you're in a closed circuit style system with little or no access to the internet computers that aren't used for general purpose browsing um, you know basically a dedicated workstation that's where you're probably gonna find this kind of stuff um, and it works well it's you know if it ain't broke don't fix it so anyway those companies often need a support package they're often corporate enterprise level companies and they don't do things that aren't supported they don't stick their neck out like that so to speak so they always just want on paper support of course and that's what Azul's been doing for OpenJDK 6 since uh, Red Hat relinquished support for that Red Hat still through at least June 2020 supporting OpenJDK 7 so uh, that would be through Red Hat Enterprise Linux of course and uh, Enterprise Linux 7.0 I believe and maybe the next few versions so since that Red Hat Linux is supported through there I imagine that's why they want to do that um, Red Hat has been a long time darn near official for uh, any of the long-term support for Java so you know all these hundreds of patch updates and stuff as far as I know to my knowledge that has been uh, Red Hat at the at the front of the line there handling all of that so they're the official stewards of Java Oracle just basically implements the new stuff does a couple of patch bug fixes and then hands it off to Red Hat even the officially supported stuff to my knowledge and then you can see OpenJDK this is not Oracle JDK it's OpenJDK which is based, you know, roughly identical uh, long-term support release, which is sort of like a retro title as far as I know, because uh, JDK 11 was when they decided to do that, so they went ahead and said, okay, 8's the previous LTS, and of course that was released March 2014, and um, it's good through September 2023. Red Hat's led since January 2019, which was just recently at the time of this recording, um, and if you notice Red Hat's releases updates twice as often as Oracle and they support the LTS versions twice as long so you're looking at updates every three months instead of every six months you're looking at LTS support for six years so it's good to know um, 910 these 
interim releases or just the every six months release they just come and go they add new features it's just the way the new Java versioning scheme works um, Oracle will release a patch or two for these and then they'll hand them off to Red Hat and I wouldn't really expect any any sort of like ongoing support from these there's possibilities of that from third parties but the best bets to kind of probably gravitate towards the LTS versions especially with Java if nothing else um, but say 11.0.3 would be like the same as uh, either 12.0 or 12.0.1 as far as the bug fixes are going to be in here so 9 is going to get the bug fixed you know and so on over 8 like these will incorporate all previous bug fixes in each new edition anyway I'm just rambling on about that so I'll continue on so 11 the current LTS version good through at least September 2025 Red Hat's gonna lead it but all these other companies are at least supporting it um, most of them are providing their own distributions as well so let's go ahead and check give a glance at the enterprise so of course this is called Jakarta EE now um, Oracle went ahead and really pushed the enterprise edition of Java out into the open and just some current figures well within the last year or so and uh, you can see most people Java EE 7 I think 8's caught up a lot since then I think 8 may even be the leader um, and then a lot of people surveyed aren't even using the enterprise edition of Java but you can see there's still a significant amount of enterprise Java 6 users so uh, when you're writing that which is effectively the Java 5 language so with a couple API improvements and stuff but uh, this is basically what you want to target if you want to target something that goes you know far wide wide reaching with no no issues I typically target Java 7 personally I avoid uh, lambdas and stuff because it's too often you start writing code like that and then one machine that it needs to run on only has a Java 7 virtual machine so anyway and here's the pie chart showing that 70 percent of those surveyed are using the official Oracle JDK um, 21 percent are using the open JDK which I imagine would be like the Linux distributions followed by the Eclipse Open J9 which started out as the um, IBM Visual Age Java editor back I want to say the late 90s and uh, that evolved and became Eclipse which became open source and it has an incremental Java compiler in it which you probably noticed if you've ever used Eclipse for development um, which was pretty radical sort of took like the opposite approach that the traditional official Java compiler took and uh, anyway that's an option now it's sort of become its own thing and that's an alternative engine the official and open JDK their engines called the hotspot Java um, compiler and this one is the J9 or open J9 okay they have an Android SDK I'm not sure if that's just like uh, referring to a JDK that gets downloaded with the Android SDK or people who are also using the Android SDK um, lately I've used the uh, the Oracle and the open JDK with Android SDK I've never used J9 with it to my knowledge it's not compatible but I'm sure somebody could get that to work Azul is little tiny 1% distributions here the Azul other and none of course alright so that's it for those. Let's get rid of that. Check the itinerary over here on the other screen, what I've covered. Okay, it's time to start going through some websites. So what Oracle says is they say go to jdk.java.net if you go to the oracle.com stuff, which I'm trying to avoid. Um, and they send you here and they say this is where you're gonna start, you know, adopt the open JDK start here kind of thing so you come here here's jdk.java.net and this is the page so 
what really matter John here's the current version um, early access some stuff they're working on and then reference implementations down here is probably what you should be most interested in 11 there's the current LTS and we'll go back to 8 which is the current uh, most popular and previous LTS version okay so we come here and we're like okay Java uh, JDK net let's get the JDK right and we start scrolling down and we realize okay here's one of those accept license agreements I know I need to do that okay here it is for Windows 7 which uh, that should run on Windows 10 i586 that should run on 32 wait a minute down at the bottom of my screen down here it's saying uh, uh, Java JDK 8 update 40 so February 2015 so this is old this is the reference edition is what I was getting at of course um, which it says right here these are reference reference implementations and uh, they are for reference purposes only they are not designed at all for production use they're not designed to be internet facing because that could be dangerous so where do you go what do you do of course so what they recommend is um, instead of doing this JDK Java.net you take a peek over here at a uh, open JDK so instead of JDK Java.net it's open JDK Java.net and when you come here you can scroll down the side here and there's these 7U and 8U and that means JDK 8 updates of course so this will be updates on top of that reference implementation still pure open JDK so we scroll down here most of these don't even have a link to a binary um, they recently put one in here for uh, this update 212 right here so you can see release latest update 212 it's uh, April 16th 2019 and uh, build 3 general availability binaries wow that's pretty rare so we come in here and there it is binaries hey what do you know the Windows release right there portable version grab that if you're unsure and you just want to get out of here you want to ditch the Oracle JDK and grab a quick copy of a recent open JDK without all the cruft there it is right there but anyway we'll get back to that so we know Red Hat's responsible for these updates we don't know where this one magically appeared from what employee decided to paste it on the website for us that was pretty cool but we'll come over here and check it out so here it is developer Red Hat products open JDK download and you just click right here or does it have some info right here okay this one right here will give you the current version which if you look at the bottom of my browser window it says Java 8 open JDK 212 build 4 slightly more recent build um, April 2019 so there it is again that's a double down on that same exact one just about the same exact one we just saw before and if you scroll down here you can see they have um, they even have installers and now these installers are actually supported too if you have the open JDK subscription through them on Windows I mean you technically have <laughs> they basically took over the reins for Oracle on that um, almost anyway and uh, otherwise the zips are portable these are the 64-bit uh, portable zip and MSI 32-bit zip MSI sources and then you get down here latest LTS 1103 all this available straight from Red Hat with installers for Windows which is a new thing they just took on if you see right here January 2019 we scroll down here MSI supplemental no support so that's one of the reasons I kinda said they were lying about taking over and because you know this is February release date so they might have taken over at some point then but it wasn't till the next release that you can see uh, MSI open JDK it doesn't say no support right here because they are claiming to support Windows at this point from 2019 onward okay so that's the Red Hat official which is just about pure open JDK with a nice little Red Hat film you know this installer is Red Hat so that wouldn't be pure open JDK uh, you know really just very minute slight it's almost a pure open JDK so here we goes for the life cycle of Red Hat support policy um, here's the URL to that if you're interested in checking I'll put all this in the description link to it 
below. So uh, you can see they're going to through 2024 for Open JDK 11, through 2023 for June for JDK 8, through 2020 June JDK 7, and of course in 2016 December was the likely time that they handed that over to Azul when they gave up Open JDK 6. Uh, here you can see the Windows versions, identical coverage uh, as compared to the uh, the Linux versions. So there it is. And OpenJDK, if you're using uh, Java on Linux and you're just using your app git install, yum install kind of thing, 99% chance or greater that you're using OpenJDK. Um, so it is a reliable system. And there is support for it. So anyway, that's an overview of Red Hat. And then right here is Adopt Open JDK, which I want to go back here. So it's like if we bounce back here and we check it out, Adopt Open JDK is the ones actually compiling and distributing these uh, Open JDK updates, which we know Red Hat's responsible for, but this open Adopt Open JDK project. So we go over to their website and we check it out. And this is the next, obviously I'm veering away from the pure Open JDK to kind of like show you the landscape of options here. Um, what's notable here is this OpenJ9 option. The OpenJ9 gives you that Eclipse, IBM, OpenJ9 compiler alternative. You can pick any, you can pick the second to last LTS, you can pick the most recent LTS, and you can pick just the current uh, JDK release. Any one of those and you can pair it up with the uh, conventional hotspot compiler or OpenJ9, which is pretty cool. So that's the next step up, and then you say, well, what if you want this with support? Well, you can get that too, of course. And that is right here. J Clarity is one of those little smaller companies offering support across the Adopt Open JDK project or packages. So that's one option. Of course, there's several options in all these categories. Just Here's SAP Machine, OpenJDK release maintained and supported by SAP. So that's another option. Um, some of these places are offering their own packages. I think JClarity might just expect you to go ahead and grab one from OpenJDK yourself and then they'll just give you the support on top of that. Amazon even, of course, is offering their own. It seems to be pretty much uh, par for the course kind of thing. They claim that they're going to be working on uh, performance and security improvements as well. So we'll see whether or not that's a, a significant improvement over the other open JDK offerings as time passes. But of course they offer a uh, support package as well. And Azul, who are notable for supporting open JDK 6, um, they supply packages of all Java versions which I imagine they would support and they also are notable for packaging Java effects which since Java 11 has not been packaged with Java the standard edition any longer it's its own package its own module so anything called Zulu uh, through Azul is basically their open JDK offering I think Zing is their commercial version and uh, Last notable thing is that they provide, I believe, the JRE right here. They provide JREs for the LTS version um, if you have a use for a standalone JRE, which is not officially available. And of course, IBM is in the game. Uh, they seem to be more Linux centric, Unix type of centric. Uh, let's see here, what does it say if we try and pick up the Windows version? It's way down here, I believe. It's Windows Eclipse install, so they kind of just defer you over and they say it's not officially supported and stuff like that. But anyway, they do offer their, they have support packages and stuff worth knowing about. And so you may ask yourself now, okay, we've seen the pure open JDK, we've seen the commercial support layers on top of the open JDK. Is there are there open JDK builds that 
aren't handled by these commercial companies? Are there pure community builds? And of course there are, supposedly. Um, these are basically the same thing that Red Hat and a lot of these other places are doing. Here you go, Windows X64 2.12, long-term support until June 23. Um, build 2.12, build 4, open JDK, you know, you've seen it, there it is. We've got old LTS, current LTS, current version of Java, all right there, as well as uh, back versions and whatnot. So it's based on OpenJDK from the Ascent OS project, which is in turn based on OpenJDK from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux project, which is in turn based on the official Oracle JDK. And uh, the Windows versions, they try and gear towards behaving and all that is like the Ascent OS packages as well. So that's your pure community builds. Um, there's also this place called Liberica, or a distribution called Liberica, Liberica, and uh, it packages uh, Java FX 12, and it also offers compact packages which don't have Java FX in them, but they're uh, notably compact supposedly. So that's another packaging option as well as Chocolatey, the package manager for Windows. You can see OpenJDK 11, Red Hat build, da da da. Um, there are Chocolatey packages available as well. So I'll check the notes and see if there's anything I left out over here. Last tab, almost didn't see it. So this is OpenJFX.io. Uh, this is the company that's now in charge of handling Java FX packaging and distribution at least and it's now a separate module it's no longer part of the standard distribution so if you are interested in continuing to use that you will need to uh, come here documentation getting started what's going on here we go visit and it doesn't really matter what version that says right there at least so far uh, you can just come down here and skim through these instructions uh, you know if you haven't installed Java yet go ahead and maybe follow that one but this one's basically it right here so that's the URL that you will need to get to one way or the other and you're basically just going to add the libraries the the Java effects libraries to this path to effects environment variable here I'll even set it for Windows. There's a similar line to do the same thing on Windows. And then uh, when you go to compile your Java programs, you'll have to include that. Uh, I mean, you don't even have to put that variable in your path, really. You could just take this, uh, excuse me, you could just take this path to the libraries and you could just literally put that right there instead of that variable. That's another option. But either way, you have to put the, mo the path to your Java effects modules and you have to tell it to bring in the uh, the necessary modules from that path and then of course you're just like you normally would compile your Java program. Um, your IDE, if it's Java, you know, modern Java and open Java effects compatible should be able to handle all this, but I often end, in, end up handling it from the command line. And then to run it is also a similar command. What's going on here? What's different? Oh, this is if you're using an FX, FXML file as well. Okay, so you can see they brought in the two modules, the FX controls and FXML. Okay, and then to run it, you'll also have to provide that module path. So anyway, if you do all that stuff, then it, uh, from there it should behave a lot like the older versions of Java. If you have a Java 7, Java 8 program or something like that with the uh, Java FX code. So that's it for what's up with the Java landscape. Now you know. Pick something, try it out. If you don't like it, pick something else, try it out. I'll put a ton of links in the description below. Thanks a lot.